So this is the Pier Gintwegen. It heads up to Gala, that's probably not how you pronounce it, and we are going to head up here. I think it's going to be very narrow, very twisty, and it brings us out, I don't know, a long way south of here, which is where we want to go, because I've been heading north for the next, uh, uh, for the last 10 kilometres. So, let's do it. Let's see what the Pier Gintwegen is all about. The other thing to note at the start of the Pier Gintwegen is we've just gone over 5,000 kilometres. So good old Wilbur, keep it up. So Pier Gint is a character from a fictional play by Henrik Ibsen. It was written in 1867 and it's a story about a man called Pier Gint who travels from Norway because he's banished by his family for doing all sorts of odd things and being a bit naughty. So it's a story about procrastination and avoidance. So he travels from Norway to Africa and the Pier Gintwegen is part of the route he took in this fiction through the Norwegian mountains. So the road has its own website and this is the full path here. We're actually joining it at Gala and we're going to head south down towards number one which is Skekamnen I think if I've pronounced that right. So as we get onto the start I realise that this is a dirt road. I didn't expect that. We've done a bit of climbing and this road's going to follow along this ridge line. I think the total route is about 57 kilometres. Let's have a look and see. I guess what I didn't expect to see up on the top of the hill is an electronic bomb gate. And up on the right there you can see it's camera monitored. So any thoughts I had of sneaking around the barrier on the motorbike were out the window there. <laughs> so anyway you've got to put your credit card in. And it's 85 krona for this section of the road, and it's 75 if you do the other section as well. But anyway, we're here now, I'm going to give it a go. I just don't really like paying tolls to ride on dirt roads. That doesn't seem right. The views had better be worth it. Well, we've just stopped here at Listul Hogda at 10,053 metres above sea level. It's about 15 degrees, there's no wind. Perfect. There's the odd car around, um, but this road is, um, well, you can look at the view yourself without me in it. How about that? That's a pretty good view. But the road's a bit crap. It doesn't seem to matter where you go in Norway, there's always a camper van, but at least this one noticed and he put his indicator on and pulled over. That was very nice of them, because lots of them didn't do that. So yes, thank you to him. So you can see the road conditions are pretty good in this area as far as a dirt road goes and it's great scenery to be looking out on. Earlier on the road had trees on both sides, you couldn't see much, but it opens up here. But then we get to this area here with corrugations. 
and as we're getting further south we've got corrugations and loose gravel and the road conditions slowly get worse. You can see here there's even more loose gravel. Well, I was hoping when we got through the toll gate, when we were off the pier Gint, the road conditions would improve, but they didn't. They just got worse and worse and worse. We're on loose, dusty gravel there, and then we end up in a set of roadworks where they've dug the road up, and this was slippy mud and gravel. Yes, terrible. Well, poor old Wilbur. This road gets worse. The wet clay, well, the clay was okay, and then it's turned to this awful gravel stuff and now we're stuck in a, a bloody escorted traffic thing and I'm going to be here for at least 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, but this stuff's evil. Um, I don't like this at all. Uh, so anyway, we've done the Pier Gint. Um, that was a waste of an hour. An 85 kroner. Um, what do we think about it? The scenery wise, the scenery was pretty good. I think we'll give the scenery a 7 out of 10. Um, the road condition, a 3 out of 10, and then I'm going to take one off because it was a toll road even though it was clay, so that's 2 out of 10, and I'm going to take one off for this, so that's 1 out of 10, our worst condition road. Um, so 7 for scenery, 1 for road conditions, where does that put us? 4 out of 10, put it on the avoid list, I wouldn't do this again, no way mate, nope. This is it, the last stretch now. It's about um, 20 kilometres into Lillehammer. Now we'll find the camping, we'll get sorted out. And I've just got to cut the beers from the spa on the way past. So we're getting there, and at least I haven't had to go down that E6. Um, but I don't know, that might have been better than the Pier Grin. We're not sure, we'll talk about that later. We were certainly glad to be out of those roadworks and back onto tarmac. But this is the outskirts of Lillehammer. You can see the river that runs down the middle of the valley on the right there. And the campsite I'm looking for is down at the end here, just outside the centre of town. So I'm hoping that this campsite's going to be good. It looked good. We'll get to reception, get checked in. And I think we're going to go for a cabin because it's forecast to be very cold tonight. Well, that's it. We're checked in. Um, it's going to be four degrees tonight, so I have uh, treated myself to a cabin. It's just up here, hut number nine. This is Lillehammer Camping. The centre of town's 15 minutes walk that way. So let's go and find our hut, get sorted out. Well, that's it. We're in the hut. We'll have a walk up to town later, but for now, it's time for me and Wilbur to take 10 minutes. I've got my beer nuts here. I've got a can of Fry Denlund Juicy IPA, and that's exactly what we're going to do. Oh, what a day. Well, that's it. It's about 7 p.m. I'm showered. I've got changed. Feel a lot better for that. That was, it was a long day's riding, it wasn't a hard day's riding. Um, just oh, too much scenery to look at. So anyway, I've got my Lonely Planet guide, I've got my city guide. 
that I picked up from reception here and uh, there's the river that runs through the center of oh, it's not the center through the edge of Lillehammer there it's a pretty good view it's such a lovely evening I'm gonna walk up into town and I'm gonna try and find me some local stuff like local sliced animal like reindeer steak or something like that that would be delicious After a very pleasant walk through the absolutely deserted streets of Lillehammer we get to the other end of the high street where things are supposed to happen. Like a mirage in the distance, I think I can see a pub on the corner. Heim, yes that's it. That's the place that was mentioned, I think that's where we're going. Gastro pub it said, that means food and beer. Let's go. Oh this must be the centre of town. Look at that. So into Heim and they had some very nice local brews on, a decent menu, so I decided it was pork knuckle with sweet potato fries and beans. Delicious. So Heim was pretty good. They were having the pub quiz tonight on a Monday. Um, I think they've got an NSU quickly on the wall, but there was, I mean the place was packed because it was pub quiz night. Um, and I thought it was a bit rude to take photos over the top of people of the motorbike, so I didn't. Uh, but anyway, it was good food, that pork knuckle with the beans and the sweet potato fries that went down very well a couple of local beers I'm stuffed I'm ready to head back mm, Ford Ranger you'll regret that hopefully you can see that just an interesting point on the way back is that the clock on the left says five to four and the clock on the right I think it says about 17 minutes past 11 both of which are completely wrong because it's about 9 p.m. Well that's it, our first evening in Lillehammer and I'm about beat. This is my cabin for the night, it's a modern one, it's not the traditional one like we had last night but anyway there we are. It'll do the job, it's got a kettle which is the important job so at least I can have a cup of tea in the morning and well the bedding's supplied in this one so that's okay I don't have to get my own stuff out. Um, I'm going to sit here and work out what we're doing tomorrow. Um, it's probably going to involve a run 15 kilometres north, which is where the bobsled and the um, ski jumps and stuff are. And we'll go and have a look at that. And I think that's where they've moved the museum to. It used to be in the town, it seems, but I think they've moved it north. So I think we're going to go there and have a look round up there tomorrow. I'm going to sign off for the night and copy all my SD card stuff and all that kind of thing. And um, yeah, what a day, one to remember. So join us tomorrow when we will not be doing uh, any more clay roads. So join us next time when we visit the Olympic bobsleigh track, but unfortunately everything's closed. So we go across the road to the Norwegian Historic Motor Museum. They have a large collection of all sorts of things, including model cars, leaf basses, speedway bikes, historic cars, including 1907 Fossum here, a 1903 Engstrom motorcycle, Think, which were of course Norwegian and years ahead of their time. They did some great cars. They even made a car called a Troll, believe it or not. There's Tempo motorcycles. All the exhibitions are related to vehicles and driving in Norway. So it's great to visit and get their take on things. There's even a large collection of cycles all the way from veteran to modern. After that we head next door to the Norks Veg Museum which is the road building museum and it takes the story of the roads all the way from hand tools at the beginning for car tracks through to the modern day. 
So they have lots of internal exhibitions and then outside they've got loads of historic machinery. All that and more next time on Wilbur's Arctic Adventure. Yeah.